Hi, I'm John, the banking systems engineer, Turbell. And people who believe that inflation is shift A, too much money chasing the collateral, whereas we know it's shift B, the same money chasing less collateral after foreclosure, well, whenever they talk about IMF may need to print money, they call it the nuclear option. And I have another article I'll talk about. JP Morgan sees the Fed cutting rates to zero. Oh, the nuclear option. Bank of England mulls nuclear option of cash injection in exchange for direct purchase of assets. Perfect. Chips in exchange for collateral. Interest free. No imbalance. Will save their economy. Good for them. IMF may need to, quote, print money, unquote, as crisis spreads from the telegraph.co.uk. <clears throat> The International Monetary Fund may soon lack the money to bail out an ever-growing list of countries crumbling across Eastern Europe. Is that true? Latin America, Africa, and parts of Asia, raising concerns that it will have to tap taxpayers in Western countries for a capital infusion. Is that true? Or resort to the nuclear option of printing its own money. Ah, so... They won't have to bother anybody for deposits if they print their own chips. By Ambrose Evans Pritchard, 20th of October 2008. The fund is already close to committing a quarter of its 200 billion reserve chest with loans to Iceland, 2 billion, Ukraine, 16 billion, with Pakistan, 14 billion, Hungary, 10 billion, as well as Belarus and Serbia. Neil Shering, emerging market strategist at Capital Economics, said the IMF's work in the great arc of countries from the Baltic states to Turkey is only just beginning. Quote, when you tot up the countries across the region with external funding needs, you get to 500 billion or 600 billion very quickly. And that blows the IMF out of the water. The fund may soon have to start calling on the West for additional funds. Well, no, they won't. Only a piggy bank does. And we know that they can print money. They have the right to issue their own chips. Brad Sester, an expert on capital flows at the Council of Foreign Relations, said Russia, Mexico, Brazil, and India have together spent $75 billion of their reserves defending their currencies this month. And South Korea is grappling with a serious banking crisis. So spending all your money is called defending your currency. Right now, the IMF is too small to meet the foreign currency liquidity needs of the larger emerging economies. We're in a dangerous situation, and there is the risk of extreme moves in the markets, as we have seen with the Brazilian real. I hope policymakers understand how serious this is. The IMF, led by Dominique Strauss-Kahn, has the power to raise money on the capital markets by issuing AAA bonds under its own name. Yeah, 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 okay, so they can go out there and if there's any money around, try and get it to buy and sell their bonds. If there's no money around, they can't sell their bonds, right? It has never resorted to this option, preferring to tap member states for deposits. The nuclear option, scary, uh, the nuclear option, they call it, is to print money by issuing special drawing rights. Now, don't forget, Argentina saved itself, the federal government, by printing and spending money. But notice that whenever they spent the money, they got something in exchange. In other words, spending the money created something in exchange that backed it up. So, printing and spending money is perfect. What it is, is letting the banks print it so they can loan shark it to the government, who then spends it and taxes it out with interest, that's the problem. But spending it, taxing it out, no interest, that's no problem, because the money equals the amount of debt and the taxes needed to pay it off. It's only when you have interest that you have imbalance, morons. So they have the nuclear option of printing IMF chips, in effect acting as if it were the world's central bank. This was done briefly after the fall of the Soviet Union. Okay, well, they've actually done it before, so they can issue their own chips. Now, do they charge interest? Bet you they do, causing the, causing the instability. But it's never been used as a systematic tool of policy to head off a global financial crisis. Well, it could head off a global financial crisis. The IMF can, in theory, create liquidity like a central bank, said an informed source. There are a lot of ideas kicking around. So, they could do the solution, but they don't want to. 
It's scaring them to the nuclear option, you know? Doing the right thing is scary. Don't forget, they're scared because they think inflation is shift A. And they figure that, they forget that when the money is spent, they're getting something as collateral. When the money leaves the cage, the collateral is coming in. They forget that. They just think money going out means inflation. These are economists, you know, brain damaged. So, for now, Eastern Europe is the epicenter of the crisis. Blah, blah, blah. Tells how bad things are for everybody in Eastern Europe. Hungary and Romania and Russia and... Russia and Eastern Europe have borrowed 1.6 billion from banks in the last little while to fund their growth spurt. And um, he said Turkey was likely to join the queue for bailouts soon. In other words, it's like when your creditor or your debtor goes broke, then all of a sudden you have to call your creditor and say, I can't pay you either because he couldn't pay me. So when he has to declare bankruptcy because he can't pay you, then you have to declare bankruptcy because he can't pay him, and then he has to declare bankruptcy because he can't pay him, and that's how a crash works. They raise the interest rates, and they call in everybody's loans at the same time so that nobody's selling and prices dive, and then the guys with a bit of cash get to go buy everything cheap. The bankers, right? So anyway, Pakistan also is facing trouble. So internationally... The IMF could actually run it like a casino bank, but they probably would loan shark it out. So, can't trust them to do it right. Okay, J.P. Morgan sees Fed cutting rates to zero in January, Monday, December the 1st, from the news at yahoo.com. New York Reuters, the Federal Reserve will lower its policy rate to 0% by January in its attempt to avert a prolonged recession and to revive the struggling credit market, according to J.P. Morgan securities analysts. Okay, now, listen. If the banks really reduced the interest rate to zero and they made those funds available to people and people could still pay them for a service charge, so you borrow a million, everybody should go out and borrow a million bucks and put it in their dresser drawer. The day you can do that is the day that you're going to know your banking system is fixed. But just because they say the Fed is cutting the rates to zero, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to get any of it. <clears throat> the Fed will locally hold, likely hold its target rate on a benchmark federal funds. The overnight cost banks charge each other to borrow surplus reserves at zero, at least through the end of 2001. J.P. Morgan analyst wrote in a research note published one day. The Fed's Fed fund target rate is currently 1%. The U.S. Central Bank began its rate-cutting campaign in September when the Fed's fund target was 5.25%. The number of analysts widely expect the Fed to lower the policy target rate to a half a percent at the end of December. Some predict the U.S. economy may contract by an annualized 4% in the fourth quarter. J.P. Morgan analysts now see the Fed stepping up its rate easing in conjunction with its various financial programs and proposed fiscal stimuli in coming months. They predict that the Fed will pair the Fed funds target rate by half a percentage point at its December meeting for another half point in January 27-28. This compared with their forecast of a quarter point cut in a Reuters poll conducted November 10th. So basically, they are cutting the rates they say for the banks, but you're not going to be able to get any of it. So what good is it? December 5th, 2008. Bank of England mulls nuclear option of cash injection. What is that? A talking point? They're always going to talk about nuclear option when they talk about printing money. The Bank of England is working on a radical plan to inject cash directly into the economy. The nuclear option to be used only when interest rates approach zero. By Edmund Conway, economics editor. And he points out the measures under consider include direct purchases of assets, which means that they're going to issue chips in exchange for assets, just like a casino bank, at zero interest. Wonderful. Perfect solution. Finally, that is a very smart idea. But of course, the standard worry is, this is it, this would involve using the ways and means bank account at the bank to buy government securities and wouldn't affect amount to printing cash. In normal times, such a move would be highly inflationary. Shift A inflation, right? Increase in money supply. But with the UK facing deflation next year, such a plan is now thought to be valid. Oh, brand new idea in an economist's brain. Isn't that neat? So, 
Good news, though. 